Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Nick Pell coming to you once again with another book review. And this week's book for you guys is the seventh book in the Walking Dead series, entitled uh, The Walking Dead Book 7. It's uh, this hardcover edition that I've been reading for the past six books, and I'll be reading the same type for book eight next week. The uh, series is by Robert Kirkman, if you are not aware of that. And, uh, yeah, it's a seventh one, and it continues the series. Just before I get into anything, I'll say this, there will be spoilers from books 1 through 6 in here, or there's some of them, and uh, some minor spoilers, uh, nothing major plot-wise, but some minor spoilers from book 7. So, uh, keep that in mind before we proceed, and I will begin, as usual, with characters. And once again, I begin with our first character, Rick, and he is continually the leader of this group, and even in this new society that they've kind of found and are beginning to become a part of, um, he is still... He still has this kind of leadership motivation, and he wants to do the right thing and protect his people and even these new people that he's come across. It's just kind of an instinct for him by this point, A, because he was a police officer, and also because he's kind of grown into the role. And uh, it's kind of interesting to see how he works with that. And our second main character is Michonne, and she, as usual, is our main character mainly because... Uh, she is one of Rick's kind of sidekicks. She is one of the main leaders of the group. And she is most similar to Rick um, in terms of her mental state because as you saw in book six or five, I'm not sure which one, um, you saw that Rick was talking on a phone that was not hooked into anything and he was able to communicate with Lori in that sense just kind of because he's kind of losing it mentally in some ways. Um, the show is kind of similar. She's able to talk with her ex-boyfriend because uh, she's kind of losing it as well. But they're both very stable in that sense, or in every other sense. Um, and we also have Abraham. He is, once again, a main character uh, who we saw a while back, and he is continually in this series. He is also starting to take up something of a leadership position in the community. You see him kind of work his way forward in the group that he is assigned to, and he's kind of making to him what is the basic decision to make while others would kind of do something opposite and it's kind of cool to see that scene. It happens very quickly into the book but it's a really cool scene and it kind of shows you uh, kind of what these people are willing to do to kind of protect everyone and survive which other people who haven't had to survive like them are not as willing to do. We also have Glenn and he I think this is the first time he's been the main character, um, but he just seemed to have more of an influence in this book, um, just, and it, it seemed to focus on him a little bit more, which I was kind of happy about because we don't really see Glenn a lot. I mean, he's in there with Maggie and Sophia, but he's not really a central character to the series, so it's kind of cool to see that. And lastly, we have Douglas, and he is the leader of this whole community, and he was one of the ones who tried to start build it. and. Um, he's a very interesting character because, like I said, with the book six review, you didn't really know what his real plan was. And I feel like in this it's more clear what his intentions are. It's kind of a nice relief to see that there is someone who has these legit intentions. An interesting twist um, in between the chapters to see him kind of lose control in some aspects and uh, just the effects that that takes on it. But those are our main characters, and as usual, there are many other characters in this uh, series. The ones I mentioned were just the main ones that I felt had some importance. So, moving on to the plot, and it, like a probably inference, inference? Like I talked about with the characters, um, the plot continues on with this new community that Rick and his group have come across. It's kind of just them kind of initiating themselves into the society. They've been assigned their roles. Rick has made some suggestions to Douglas and he is kind of making the community safer in some aspects. Abraham is kind of taking on a leadership role and he's helping them fight off the walkers and making the community safer and getting the men to kind of not just do the safe fighting but kind of go out, risk their lives, take out the walkers and learn strategies for doing that. And it's kind of a cool thing to see that Rick and Scrooge are actually working with another group for once instead of one of them being kind of the bad guys. I don't know, it's kind of, it's a new thing to see. 
and uh, the ending is very exciting. It leaves something on the cliffhanger. You can kind of assume what's going to happen, but um, it was very exciting during the last few pages because uh, it's a very intense scene. And so that's the plot. It continues with uh, the place that they're in. I don't remember what the place they're in is called. It continues with that initiating in the society in the first chapter, and then kind of doing some more of that, but taking precautions at being safe and other stuff in the second chapter. So, um, that is your plot. And uh, we move on to themes, and the same themes as last time in terms of survival, truth, well, I don't know the truth, but survival, well, it's true. Survival, life, death, uh, truth in some aspects in the first chapter. Um, but also trust is also one that you kind of need to see in terms of Rick being able to trust his, um, these new people that he's come across and then the people in the society being able to trust Rick and rely on him as something of a leader but also um, knowing that he is the one who knows best how to survive this thing. Uh, it's kind of cool to see that happen. And yeah, that brings us to enjoyment. And I did enjoy this one as I have enjoyed the past ones. I felt that it is continuing the story at a good pace. Uh, it's picking up a little bit. I feel like it might have slowed down a tad bit here just because it seems like it's, the story is kind of settling down a little bit. There is a death in this book. Um, keep that in mind. Uh, so it does progress a little bit. It does get more exciting and towards the end it starts to build up again. But, uh, I'm honestly kind of looking forward to when um, this society of Douglas's does eventually crumble which we all know it's going to happen eventually. We don't know when but it will because stuff like this never lasts long. When we saw the prison we thought that was secure and it fell in like two books, two three books and so it's just a matter of time with this. I don't know, just keeping that uh, feeling that you are never really safe during this time and anything could happen and you always have to be on your guard. And uh, it's a good thing to keep in mind for a zombie apocalypse or even life because you realistically you're never safe but you also have to be trustful and know how to survive and stuff. Did that make sense? Probably not. Yeah, I recommend it. If you've read books 1 through 6, read book 7. Uh, book 8 will be actually a new release I will be getting it in October, because right now it's the end of August, and yeah, I'll review that as soon as I finish it at college, and the review will go up right after this one, so, um, yeah, that's about it, so yeah, yeah, like, favorite, comment, and subscribe if you so choose, I would appreciate it, and you guys would be awesome, so yeah, as usual, my name is Nick Pell, and as always, my good people, keep on reading. Dear I